KSJE and the Farmington Public Library present Quinto's Hana and Tales. Hello, my name is Leanna. I work at the Farmington Public Library as the Youth Services Librarian. Today, I would like to share with you some stories from my favorite picture book authors. The first book that I'd like to share with you today is called Dr. DeSoto by William Steig. Dr. DeSoto, the mouse and dentist, did very good work, so he had no end of patience. Those close to his own size, moles, chipmunks, etc., sat in the regular dentist chair. Larger animals sat on the floor, while Dr. DeSoto stood on a ladder. For extra large animals, he had a special room. There, Dr. DeSoto was hoisted up to the patient's mouth by his assistant, who also happened to be his wife. Dr. DeSoto was especially popular with the big animals. He was able to work inside their mouths, wearing rubber boots to keep his feet dry. His fingers were so delicate and his dil drill so dainty that they could hardly feel any discomfort. Being a mouse, he refused to treat animals dangerous to mice, and it said so on a sign outside his window. When the doorbell rang, he and his wife would look out the window. They wouldn't admit even the most timid-looking cat. One day, when they looked out, they saw a well-dressed fox with a flannel bandage around his jaw. I cannot treat you, sir, Dr. DeSoto shouted. Sir, haven't you read my sign? Please, the fox wailed. Have mercy, I'm suffering. And he wept so bitterly, it was pitiful to see. Just a moment, said Dr. DeSoto. That poor fox, he whispered to his wife. What shall we do? Let's risk it, said Mrs. DeSoto. She pressed the buzzer and let the fox in. He was up the stairs in a flash. Bless your little hearts, he cried, falling to his knees. I beg you, do something. My tooth is killing me. Sit on the floor, sir, said Dr. DeSoto. And remove the bandage, please. Dr. DeSoto climbed up the ladder and bravely entered the fox's mouth. Oh! he gasped. The fox had a rotten by cuspid and unusually bad breath. This tooth will have to come out, Dr. DeSoto announced. But we can make you a new one. Just stop the pain, whimpered the fox, wiping some tears away. Despite his misery, he realized he had a tasty little morsel in his mouth, and his jaw began to quiver. Keep open, yelled Dr. DeSoto. Wide open, yelled his wife. I'm giving you gas now, said Dr. DeSoto. You won't feel a thing when I yank that tooth. Soon, the fox was in dreamland. Mmm, yummy, he mumbled. How I love them raw and with just a pinch of salt. They could guess what he was dreaming about. Mrs. DeSoto handed her husband a pole to keep the fox's mouth open. Dr. DeSoto fashioned his extractor to the bad tooth. Then he and his wife began turning the winch. Finally, with a loud sound, the tooth popped out and hung swaying in the air. Dr. DeSoto ran up the ladder and stuffed some gauze into the fox's mouth. The worst is over, he said. I'll have your new tooth ready tomorrow. Be here at 11 sharp. The fox, still woozy, said goodbye and left. On his way home, he wondered if it would be shabby of him to eat the DeSotos when the job was done. After office hours, Mrs. DeSoto molded a tooth of pure gold and polished it. Raw salt, indeed, muttered Dr. DeSoto. How foolish of me to trust a fox. He didn't know what he was saying, said Mrs. DeSoto. Why should he harm us? We're helping him. Because he's a fox, said Dr. DeSoto. They're wicked, wicked creatures. 
That night, the DeSotos lay awake worrying. Should we let him in tomorrow? Mr. DeSoto wondered. Once I start a job, Mr. DeSoto said, I guess I should finish it. My father was the same way. But we must do something to protect ourselves, said his wife. They talked and talked until they formed a plan. I think this will work, said Dr. DeSoto, and a minute later he was snoring. The next morning, promptly at eleven, a very cheerful fox turned up. He was not feeling any pain. When Dr. DeSoto got into his mouth, he snapped it shut for a moment, then opened wide and laughed. Just a joke, he chortled. Be serious, said the dentist sharply. We have work to do. His wife was lugging the heavy tooth up the ladder. Oh, I love it, exclaimed the fox. It's just beautiful. Dr. DeSoto set the gold tooth in its socket and hooked it up to the teeth on both sides. The fox caressed the new tooth with his tongue. My, it feels good, he thought. I really shouldn't eat them. On the other hand, how can I resist? We're not finished, said Dr. DeSoto, holding up a large jug. I have here a remarkable preparation developed only recently by my wife and me. With just one application, you can be rid of toothaches forever. How would you like to be the first one to receive this unique treatment? I certainly would, the fox declared. I'd be honored. He hated any kind of pain. You will never have to see us again, said Dr. DeSoto. No one will ever see you again, said the fox to himself. He had definitely made up his mind to eat them, with the help of his brand new tooth. Dr. DeSoto stepped into the fox's mouth with a bucket of secret formula and proceeded to paint each tooth. He hummed as he worked. Mrs. DeSoto stood on the ladder and pointed out spots that Mr. DeSoto had missed. The fox looked very happy. When the dentist was done, he stepped out. Now close your jaws tight, he said, and keep them closed for a full minute. The fox did as he was told, then tried to open his mouth, but his teeth were stuck together. Ah, excuse me, I should have mentioned, said Dr. DeSoto. You won't be able to open your mouth for a day or two. The secret formula must first permeate the dentine. But don't worry, no pain ever again. The fox was stunned. He stared at Dr. DeSoto, then at his wife. They smiled and waited. All the fox could do was say, <laughs> through his clenched teeth, and get up and leave. He tried to do so with dignity. Then he stumbled down the stairs in a daze. Dr. DeSoto and his assistant had outfoxed the fox. They hugged each other and decided to take the rest of the day off. The End The next two stories that I'd like to share with you are by the same author, whose name is Tommy DePaola. Tommy DePaola has written more than 260 children's books, and the first I'd like to share with you today is called Helga's Dowry, a Troll Love Story. Helga was the loveliest troll in three parishes. But, alas, having been orphaned as a troll child, she was also the poorest. So when handsome Lars asked for her hand in marriage, Helga said, But Lars, I don't have a dowry. How can we marry without one? It's the law. Don't worry, said Lars, with moonstruck eyes. I'll ask old rich Finn. He might have an idea. Old rich Finn did have an idea. Lars, my boy, you should marry my daughter, plain Ing. Lars laughed and laughed until old Finn counted out Ing's dowry. Thirty cows, three chests of gold, and a mountain pasture, he said. She'll make you a good wife and the richest troll in the land, except for the troll king, of course. 
Plain Ing was so thrilled with the idea of becoming Lars's wife that she ran around telling everyone, including Helga. When Helga heard the news, she burst into tears and caused a thunderstorm. I'm sorry, Helga, said Lars. You'll always have a special place in my heart, but you know how important it is for a troll man to be rich, especially one as handsome as I am. Poor Helga. Didn't one-eyed Odin say a thousand years ago from his heaven throne that all unmarried troll maidens must wander the earth forever? She sat beneath the troll bridge to think. Oh, pish, she said. Why should I sit here and pout? I'm a troll and a clever one at that. I'll just go out and earn myself a dowry. So Helga wrote a note to Lars and asked him to please wait for her. Then she put some troll things from her cupboard into a cart, tucked up her tail, stepped into some high-soled shoes, and went hopping down the mountain into the land of people. Aha! Here's a good place to start, said Helga, looking at the piles of laundry. And no smoke coming out of the wash house chimney, either. Any laundry for a poor washerwoman? Helga asked the farm wife, who was sunning herself. I certainly have, said the farm wife. What do you charge? Helga spied the cows in the pasture. Do you want to take a chance? Helga asked. If I don't finish all that laundry by sundown, you won't owe me a penny. But if I do, you must pay me thirty-five cows. Ironing, too? asked the farm wife. Of course, said Helga. Nothing like free laundry hummed the farm wife as she heaped even more laundry onto the mountains of dirty clothes. A lazy farm wife sitting in the sun, troll powder in the water wash is done, troll wax on the iron wrinkles flat, Helga has her cows and that is that, sang Helga, climbing up the mountain with her cows. Now for the gold, said Helga the next morning as she put on a turban and a fancy cloak. She piled four wooden chests on the cart and went rumbling down the mountain into the people's marketplace. Be young and beautiful again, cried Helga, all for an ounce of gold. The ladies of the town, and a few men too, dropped gold earrings, bracelets, watches, chains, and lockets into the scales. Rub this juvenescent cream all over your face. Wait a few minutes and look said Helga, passing out jars and mirrors to her customers. Rub a little troll grease on the cheek. Polish up troll mirrors, take a peek. Find some vain people who hate looking old. Helga's four chests are filled with gold, trilled Helga, pushing her cart home. And now, the hardest task of all, she said, walking down the mountain early the next day. She knocked on the door of a rich man's house. All those trees on your mountain there could make you twice as rich, Helga said. Twice as rich, the man asked. If they were logs, cut and split, said Helga. Madam, it would take a hundred men to do such work. Don't you know what labor costs? I'll make you a bargain then, said Helga. If I can clear those trees all in a week... Will you give me the land thereon? Madam, you're a woman, exclaimed the man. So what? said Helga. And a loony one at that, said the man to himself. But it's worth a try. Nothing like free labor. Oh, what a luck to find a greedy man, and now I'll chop as fast as I can. I'll swing my troll axe so sharp and fine, and that mountain pasture soon will be mine, warbled Helga. She chopped and chopped, but the forest seemed to grow larger every day that Helga worked. I'd almost think there was trollery afoot, said Helga, pausing to catch her breath. There is said a tree with a laugh that shook all its branches. <clears throat> Plain ing, said Helga. I see you're out here trying to earn a dowry, 
bellowed Ing, who had turned herself into a tree. A dowry earned is as good as a dowry given, shouted back Helga. I'll make sure there's no dowry earned, yelled Tree Ing. Besides, our wedding is tomorrow. Lars couldn't wait. That did it. Helga was furious. I'll turn you into kindling wood, cried Helga, who promptly turned herself into a boulder. Rolling down the mountainside, Boulder Helga headed for Tree Ing, but Tree Ing just moved aside. Madder than ever, Boulder Helga rolled up the mountainside to get a better start. But when she came tumbling down again, Tree Ing moved aside once more. All day the battle raged. The air was filled with flying timber. Then, suddenly, it was quiet. Helga changed back into herself again, and Tree Ing shook with laughter. Giving up? she asked. You'll see, answered Helga, walking off to the rich man's house. The rich man could hardly believe his eyes. The mountainside was completely cleared of trees, except for one. That one will be gone before the day is over, said Helga. She has to get to a wedding. She? A wedding? the rich man asked. Yes, said Helga, and then the mountain pasture will be mine. The rich man had to agree. Oh, Helga, my dearest one, said Lars, who came running when he heard the news. Your dowry is even larger than Ing's, and I love you more than ever. There will be a wedding tomorrow, but it won't be Ing's. It won't be mine either, cried Helga. I wouldn't marry you if you were the last troll on earth. I'd rather be doomed to wander forever than be your wife. You never plan to wait for me. I want to be loved for who I am, not for what I've got. Then marry me, for I already love you for who you are. Said a voice behind them. Besides, I have no need of riches. The next day, there were two weddings. Here comes the bride, all dressed in green, sang the trolls. Our king is getting married, and Helga is our queen. And that is the end of Helga's Dowry, a troll love story. The last story that I want to share with you today is titled Oliver Button is a Sissy, and it is also by Tommy DePaula. Oliver Button was called a sissy. He didn't like to do things that boys are supposed to do. Instead, he liked to walk in the woods and play jump rope. He liked to read books and draw pictures. He even liked to play with paper dolls. And Oliver Button liked to play dress up. He would go to the attic and put on costumes. Then he would sing and dance and make believe he was a movie star. Oliver, said his papa, don't be such a sissy. Go out and play baseball or football or basketball, any kind of ball. But Oliver Button didn't want to play ball of any kind. He didn't like to play ball because he wasn't very good at it. He dropped the ball or struck out or didn't run fast enough. Oliver, said Mama, you have to play something. You need your exercise. I get exercise, Mama, said Oliver. I walk in the woods, I play jump rope, and I love to dance. Watch. So Mama and Papa sent Oliver Button to Miss Leah's dancing school. Especially for the exercise. Papa said. Oliver Button got a nice black shiny pair of tap shoes and he practiced and practiced. But the boys, especially the older ones in the schoolyard, teased Oliver Button. What are those shiny shoes, sissy? they said. la dee do are you going to dance for us? And they grabbed Oliver's tap shoes and played catch with them until one of the girls caught them. You leave Oliver Button's tap shoes alone, said the girls. Here, Oliver. Gotta have help from girls, the boys said teasingly. And they wrote on the school wall, Oliver Button 
is a sissy. Almost every day, the boys teased Oliver Button. But Oliver Button kept on going to Miss Leah's dancing school every week, and he practiced and practiced. One day, a talent show was announced. Oliver, said Miss Leah, there is going to be a talent show at the movie theater on Sunday afternoon, one month from now. I would like you to be in it. Oliver Button was all excited. Miss Leah helped him with his routine. Mama made him a costume, and Oliver practiced and practiced. Finally, it was the Friday before the big day. Class, said the teacher, on Sunday afternoon there will be a big talent show at the movie theater, and one of your classmates is going to be in it. I hope you will all go and cheer for Oliver Button. Sissy, whispered the boys. On Sunday afternoon, the movie theater was full. There was a mag magician, an accordion player, a baton twirler, and a lady who sang about moon, June, and kissing. Finally, it was Oliver Button's turn. The piano player started the music and the spotlight came on. Oliver Button stepped into it. Dum-dee-dum, the music went. Dum-dee-dum-dee-dum. Oliver tapped and tapped. Dum dee dum dee dum dee dum. Oliver bowed, and the audience clapped and clapped. When all the acts were over, the master of ceremonies began to announce the prizes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the first prize, the little girl who did the beautiful baton twirling, Roxy Valentine. The audience cheered and whistled. Oliver Button tried not to cry. Mama, Papa, and Miss Leah gave Oliver big hugs. Never mind, said Papa. We are taking our great dancer out for great pizza. I am so proud of you. So are we, said Mama and Miss Leah. Monday morning, Oliver Button didn't want to go to school. But he knew he must, so he walked slowly. When the school bell rang, Oliver Button was the last to go in. Then he noticed the school wall. It said, Oliver Button is a star. And that is the end of Oliver Button is a Sissy by Tommy DePaola. Once again, I am Leanna from the Farmington Public Library, and the books I just read are available at the Farmington Public Library. Please stop by and check them out. For more information, please visit our website at www.infoway.org. This has been Quintos, Hana, and Tales, presented by the Farmington Public Library and KSJE 90.9 FM.